My guest for the morning, Osei Bunswama, is a member of parliament for Ukiapim South. And uh, he's also a legal practitioner. Thanks for joining me. Thank you All right. so much. And uh, biochemist. Okay. I'm uh, a pharmacist. Oh, sorry. Oh, pharmacist. Yes. With the oh. Nobuchi Memorial uh, Research Institute here at the University of Ghana, Accra, uh, we have Suzanne Edouard Mankwa. Uh, also, the first vice chairperson of the CPP. Thanks for joining me. Also, you're welcome. Right. Actually, he's in my main and correct here. I'm born the first one. Oh. So CPP is oh. chairperson, lady, first vice lady. Mm -hmm. That's very. That's ve very gendable. Second vice. Very second gender vice. balanced. Mm. They even have a second vice. Is it ro ro Rodaling? Okay. okay. So first three are mm. ladies. Mm. We have some interesting issues to talk about this morning, but uh, first and foremost, let's talk about an event that happened over the weekend um, just around the Kutuka International Airport. Uh, we're told that a cargo plane belonging to Ethiopian Airlines skidded um, off the, the runway, and just like we had with a, a Nigerian is it plane. Iraq Air or something mm. like that, that happened the first time. We still have uh, this very incident happening. Uh, we're told currently by officials of the GCA as well as the Ghana Airports Company that uh, demolitions around the airport will be undertaken. That's a, a promise in the second year running. Uh, what do you make of the incident in the first place, Obi? Well, um, good morning to viewers. I think it's scary in the first mm. place. I um, mean, this is the second time that we are hearing of such a situation. And looking at the circumstances, it could even have been worse. It's cargo plane, so mainly um, carrying cargo. There were a few casualties, but they went to hospital and they were discharged. If it had been a passenger airline, it would have been more disastrous. And then secondly, if it had not just gone over the runway, but rather had gone into structures at the airport where we have even a fire station and the cargo center. It would have been very bad for us. The, looking at the larger picture, we've always said that probably the airport, as an international airport, is becoming smaller and smaller, and it's not probably the place that it should be by now. If you're flying the air, you see around you all settlements. And um, we don't have to wait for disaster to happen before we start really thinking seriously about this. And if you leave around the airport, the noise from the airplanes alone can make you deaf. Because sometimes you see the belly of the aircraft even on top um, of your roof. On top of your roof. Mm. And the noise sometimes will shake the whole uh, building. It shows that obviously when we started that airport, a lot of settlements had not come there. If we allowed properties to be built around the airport, then we either get them demolished as the deputy minister is saying, or we downgrade the status of the airport and get a new one. But we keep expanding it and we keep um, investing there and it appears that we are not planning to move soon. Initially we heard that there was a new airport to be built at Pram Pram but nothing has come out of it. What we hear now is rather major investment in Tamale. So obviously we have a challenge and we don't need for disaster to occur before we start because it takes quite some time. It's not an overnight thing. It's not rushing to a shop to buy a new shirt because your shirt is torn or is sold. You have to plan towards it, invest, and make sure that you have a new place where you think it's safer for air travel. But we seem to be saying it probably when you go to civil aviation, they'll tell you it's on a drawing board or they are securing funding for it. Probably we need more information on that. But as it is now, it's just that waiting to happen. In the sense that the flight takes off <laughs> just above settlements. If anything should happen, it has to come down. It will mm. come down the settlement. On the settlement. And it will also mean that human casualties. Very much so. So that is a challenge that we have and we need to address it. Hmm. Mm. Your, your observation on the incident? Um, 
I agree with most of the things that he said, mm. and that we thank God that it was a cargo, you know, plane and not a, a passenger plane. But even that, the last time it was a cargo plane, it ran into a car. Remember, it went off the road, ran into some chotra, and I think about 10 people or so yes. were, were killed. Broke the wall? Broke the wall. Went yeah, yeah. into the uh, work and, uh, yeah, uh, work space. Yeah. Mm. So, you know, um, <coughs> this could have been worse. And um, I think that after getting the experience and things, we need to, to learn the lessons and do things to stop this from happening. I mean, it's funny how in this country, the area around the airport is the most expensive. In, in other places, the, the, the lands around the airport are cheaper because of the noise, because of the danger, you know, and the further you are away from the noise, etc. Et but uh, we seem to have the reverse where you have the most um, expensive of areas in, you know, just around the, the airport. Um, yeah, if we can, we can move it, why not? We should move it. If, I mean, you see, I think that in, in, in this country, we do a lot of threats. And when you th threaten people with something and you never do it, you, 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 lose, you, you lose bite. We, you know, things are supposed to happen, you threaten people. You look at the motorway, for instance. The motorway originally was not supposed to be that two-lane. It was supposed to expand and expand and expand. That's the initial idea. You know, yeah. But people have built close to, to it, have encroached, and now, you know, if they have political clout, they have um, um, friends in high places, are you going to be making it down? Are you saying no. those who have built there have political clout? Well, I'm not saying, I'm saying if they have political clout, you understand. I mean, is it, then it becomes another issue. And then all of a sudden, if you cannot break one person's down, other people will join, and then it becomes worse and becomes worse. And that's what has happened to the airport. It's happening to the motorway. <coughs> it's happening to several other um, in installations that are not supposed to. Look at Wager. It's, you know, we, the Wager Dam people have built and have encroached on the land time and again. You know, I think that we must allow the laws of the country to work. And it's, 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 in, it's in our interest and the safety of all of us that these laws work or these regulations work so that you know things are done properly you know and then the, you you know you if you have to inconvenience a few people for the safety of a lot of people i think that is the way to go okay by by virtue of technology even if you haven't traveled to a country you can always uh, go to YouTube and you get videos about airports, etc. If you go to Heathrow, I know that there are settlements around. It's not as if Heathrow is somewhere else and you have to travel way back into, the, into London to, 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 to get to your wherever destination you want to go. So the airports are located in the cities and indeed cities are developing around the airport. Um, is it so different or should it be different in Ghana? that because we have an airport, so we shouldn't be having um, a lot more residents or offices or structures around the airport. I, I, is that no, the way to go? No, but the reality is that if you compare other airports to our airports, even the, there's some planning. It's planned and they know why they've made it that way. Here, I don't think there's any planning. It's haphazard. Haphazard. And if your runway stops at the edge of a road. Then you have a structure. Then you have a structure where you run into a stadium. And beyond the stadium, there are cottages and there are, uh, you have other bungalows, newly built. That means that we really didn't plan when we were doing some of these things. And uh, obviously, you expose yourself to more risk than what others have done. And even uh, some of the places, you are thinking of downgrading those airports and moving to other places. So we cannot say that it's done elsewhere. And we do it the same way here, and we don't even plan when we are doing it. Mm -hmm. I don't think that there's any planning what we've done. And uh, it's, it's very dangerous. And we're only praying, we always pray that it um, doesn't happen, nothing mm. serious happens. Well, prayer uh, is what? good, but just in the last couple of years, there's a second incident. Yes. Um, I'm uh, saying that it's cargo. Mm. It could have been a passenger airline, you say. It could have be a passenger airline, except that um, uh, probably we think that it can happen. <laughs> It's, it's a risk you always take, even with flies, and it can happen. It's, and it's more risky 
when Ella is uh, uh, taking off or landing. And if your environment is really not safe enough for such adventures, then obviously you're exposing yourself to a huge risk and, and, and loss of lives, which, which shouldn't be the, the situation. The point is that we have institutions that are expected to make sure that the regulations are either enforced or implemented, etc. Where should <coughs> the point of responsibility be? This is the second incident in the, just the last couple of years. With the regulator. I mean the, the GCA. Yes. We have an airport company as well. Yeah. Yes. And, and we're supposed to ensure the safety. Uh, yes. And those so are and, and th those are sandwiched between those two bodies. I I think so. I I mean, um, they both have responsibility, and the regulator is supposed to ensure <coughs> that um, the implementer of all the, the the policies does the right thing. So um, you know, it's not one or the other. If um, something happens they are all concerned because they all um, sh share in, in the responsibilities. So, you know, I, I think that that is what should happen. They, they should take a look at it again. If they're talking about breaking houses, then that means they are houses that are too close to the airport. And I don't think that you, even if you, you he throw is close to a settlement, is that close that they have to break a house? Or is that close that if it skips off, it's entering into, into, into the center of town? You, 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 you get it. Their settlements are right, but they're far, they far enough. And that is why they've been able to expand from Terminal 4 to Terminal 5 to whatever. You, I mean, you, you virtually have to take a, a, a train, you know, across from one terminal to the other. It's not as if you can walk yeah. to one terminal to the other. You know, and there are lots of airports that are like that, that you take trains from one terminal. That means there's lots of space around. You know, they're not all crowded in, 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 in or cramped in a, in a small area. So I think that these are some of the things that we need to, to think about, think about and, and, and see. Because, you know, our airport is getting busier and busier and busier. And safety, I know that um, the aviation industry takes safety really, I mean, um, Serious. seriously. And, uh, and we, we must look at it. The, the challenge we have in this country is we see people doing the wrong thing. We watch for it to grow. Then we, we also have to spend money to... Who watches? Is it not the public institutions that are... Yes, that's what I'm saying. That you see somebody citing a container here. It's not supposed to put a container there. You watch the person building before putting the container on it. It does everything. Then you go and put a stop work. Produce permit or so whatever. we should be more preventive than of course. Very much care if, if this is marked as your area, you should not let anybody even put a block there. Mm -hmm. But if you wait for people to build, then you start issuing trees and then spending more money to make sure they are cleared. That means that we, we, we really haven't lived up to our responsibilities. The major thing is this is my property. You can assume it was your personal property, your land. You don't let anybody encroach on the land. Because the moment the person starts, you want to show that you are the owner of the property. But here, this is government land. This is what it's been earmarked for. We wait for persons to start. One building, the next building, third building, before you are aware, mm. the whole settlement. And the person who even is supposed to have given title to the land, doesn't have title. And then we have a disaster. Then we start making all the announcements in the world that we're going to demolish all those things. How did they come up in the first place? Who were in charge? And how do we allow it to happen? That's the problem that we seem to have in this country. Every sector. Places here marked for special projects. You see people doing their own thing. And then when there's a problem, we need more money, more planning, more men, everything to be able to reverse what we should have started in the first place. And this is what is killing us. I think in 2012, 2013, uh, in the budget readings, and, and I think during some of the speeches of the president at events, there, were, there was all the talk about uh, an airport in Prom Prom, etc. Yes. Is that the way to go? Do we need now to re-demarcate a, a sectional land and say we need to build a new airport? Well, and, and would we be in a position to prevent what we've already ensured has already occurred? at the current uh, site of the airport? Well, we should learn. And as I said, it's, 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 that's been our, our culture, unfortunately. Because you earmark a place for Olympic Stadium, 
10 years after. It's is a it? whole township. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a whole township. And then it means what happened to that acquisition? Because you may have acquired it using executive instrument, you would have paid off the compensation. But you let it lie down and then people just jump onto it. If we are moving to problem, problem that's why I'm saying that uh, the civil aviation should be able to tell us more what is happening to the program project. And then probably all of us should also be up and doing. Take an I, interest. Take an interest to the extent that even though we, we, we may not know the, the borders of the uh, property of civil aviation, mm -hmm. some of us will see such as going up. And we should question it. In the first place, is it the property of the aviation, civil aviation? If it's even not the property of aviation, how come the structure is going up so close to the airport? Is it that the city authorities and town planners have allowed uh, such a structure so close to the airport? And these are questions we should ask. So beyond aviation, what are the other authorities to say? And uh, I mean, EPA, just as an EPA took AMA to court, AMA asked for more time. Now, the deadline is up. You're talking about the lavender hill. Yes. Lavender hill. Mm. So, our institutions will work what? Town and country planning. If that's still the name they have for that institution, what are they doing about some of these things? Otherwise, we go to Pram Pram, it becomes a busy place. People start acquiring lands around the airport, or people start encroaching. We are back to square one. It's, it's not good enough. Because when this airport started, obviously, mm -hmm. the well, airport area yeah, was not as it. busy as this. Uh, we've allowed it to become... And our times have changed. Now we have a lot more air airlines also flying to Ghana. Yeah, I mean, but uh, we, we seem to be in a, a pattern, you know. Um, I think when I was young, they said that they were moving the capital to Dodoa. Mm. What happened to that? That's when you, you were young. That's uh, when you young. were young. That is very recent. <laughs> oh, no, uh, no very I'm not that young. But I mean, <laughs> no, I think no, but I it, think that'll be very much. No, it was supposed to mm. be have moved to Dodoa, you know. Well, I, I, I think we all had a lot of things about whether it took capital, yeah, and and then the administrative and commercial. Yeah, and that, yes, so. but and what happened to that? There's a now, lot of Accra has to grown to, to you know and merged with Dodoa in the first place, and we we have all these lofty plans and we never really take the steps that are important i think last week i heard that some people in tamale were up in arms that the lands that government lands had been given to private developers instead of reverting back to um what you call it yeah. Yeah. Or, or, yes or, and 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 then this are increases lawlessness because the traditional owners who would then come in get and then incensed and get and incensed and then they would also come and also allocate the land anyhow mm -hmm. and you know it brings all sorts of chaos we we actually mm -hmm. encourage lawlessness in this country and the people who do the right thing then get punished you know because if you want to do the right thing, somebody will come and, and, and build where they are not supposed to be built, where building, and then in the end, your safety or your life is at risk. Mm. I think that we ought to sit up, institutions ought to sit up, people who work in the institutions ought to sit up, and the public also must, um, um, you know. I'll just give you a small example. One lady set up a table and put tomatoes on things in, in front of my sister's house. She walked over, told her that, look, this is, you can't do this in this area, sell tomatoes on a table or That's whatever. That's No, uh, no well, in, in Accra. In Accra, okay. And the lady, you know, got angry and everything. My sister said, no, okay, I don't have to deal with you. She went to the AMA. The following day, the AMA came and told the lady, you can't put this, if you want to sell the tomatoes, you sell it in your house, not outside, you just don't put a table. And that stopped it. But if she had left it like that, tomorrow is tomatoes, the following day it will be onions, another person will come and set up, and whatever, and whatever. Look at East Legon. It started off as a residential. All of a sudden, they it's, say it's, it's, a, it's a mixed area. It's, All of a it's, 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 area. it's not supposed to be a residential area. No. Because sometimes it's surprising. Mm. Places that you dreamed of as a child, yeah. that, well, one day if you get money like Ghana Bill Gates, mm. you would want to acquire property there. Right. You go and then there are tomato sellers, they are plantain, mm. roasted mm. plantain sellers, even, uh, and, there are, and there are people who are retailing clothes. Even mechanics. Yes. Even and, shops people, and, all and, those and people things. who are selling toiletries mm. as well as some. No planning. No, no. And, 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 no, but, and, but, and, and you are very, and you, mm. it's supposed to be an exclusive affluent area. Yeah. Yeah. There's no point you go to certain boulevards or, or, or places that are expected to be exclusive have, in the United States. It doesn't even have to be exclusive and affluent. 
But they should but be planning. But they should be planning. Is made up. They should be planning. Even, even in, in generations past, yes. we have sections in ca cantons, yes. in, in places that people people yes. only the the lords and and and, uh, and the barons etc. That, they stay what there. What I'm seeing that even if it's for the average person, they should be planning. Because, for instance, in case of fire, you need a fire trailer to be able to even drive there. Driving trailer. But you have containers everywhere. Containers along the streets. No, but do we have when they are unauthorized? For in areas where if there's a fire. Let's say, look, mm -hmm. where I live in Sakumono, all of a sudden they are going to be building somewhere where <laughs> it's supposed to be a park. I know, yeah. right? You know, it's supposed <laughs> to be a park. But if there's a fire, if there's a fire, mm -hmm. in, in a big fire, and you want people to assemble in an area, where in, mm -hmm. we, are, we become a concrete jungle. I remember, uh, talking about Sakumono, mm -hmm. it reminds me of all those Ramsia sites that yes, we had. Yes. All of them have now been encroached on, yeah. and, and they've now become good lands. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, last, okay. last year, the, the Minister for Environment, had to stop one foot um, selling um, company mm. from developing reserve size in Tema. It became big news. Okay. Yeah. We have on the line uh, Joyce Bauer Montari, and uh, Madam Joyce Bauer Montari is a Deputy Transport Minister. And thanks for joining us, uh, Mrs. Montari. Good morning, and thank you very much for having me. Okay. The, the very incident that happened over the weekend where we had um, the the, the, the cargo plane crashing belonging to the Ethiopian Airlines. Is there a lesson that we haven't learned because the incident happened just some few years ago, I believe? Well, thank you very much. As you just indicated, we, were all, uh, we all received the same report about this incident which occurred off the tarmac of the Kotoka International Airport. The Ghana Civil Aviation Authority has actually just put out a formal statement explaining what happened. What they would do thereafter would be to actually undertake an investigation into the causes of this incident. So that is what we know at this time. Mm. Oh, it's all good talk when some of these incidents happen, and I know that you're a deputy minister, there's a lot more pressure on you. But where you have quasi-state institutions that are expected to perhaps um, make sure that all regulations are adequately followed, and we're talking about the airport where there's uh, steep or deep encroachment um, on the lands along the airport site. Is that a worry for you as a ministry? <coughs> well, I am not very sure that this is actually um, an extreme worry for us as a ministry. I have actually also heard reports of this kind, but I am not an expert when it comes to what sort of buildings are in a flight path or not. But personally, I believe that the Ghana Airport Company and the Ghana Civilization Authority are actually working on this particular matter. So hopefully when they do come out with some very concrete uh, indications, I'm sure it will be put out into the public domain. But for now, I am not surprised with any such information. But what I do know is that normally when such incidents occur, what happens is that the Civilization Authority would actually thoroughly and of course report on exactly what the causes actually were and why it happened and of course put in these measures to ensure that these things do not happen in future. Mm. And as we follow through with the course of investigations, uh, international news media carrying these reports about uh, uh, this sort of crashes, especially at airports all over the world, tend to uh, give some negative image to the aviation industry of those countries. And now, Ghana also would be in the news in many respects. Well, certainly. You know that all of these sorts of incidents, no matter how small or depending on the magnitude of them, would all actually capture the attention of the general public. So we want to, as much as possible, assuage the fears of people generally, especially of our passengers and, of course, our uh, people that can that regard. That everything is being done to actually bring up for discussion the causes of this last incident. I don't think we have them, you know, they're not very rampant, but of course, as you indicated, every time these things happen, it is cause for us to all work. Yes. The civil aviation would come up with the concrete uh, reasons for which this uh, incident occurred, and I'm sure going forward they'll be able to find ways to at least reduce them or completely eradicate them. So yes, looking forward to that formal uh, or official uh, report when it's finally ready. Within the last couple... also know that there were no disruptions to any other flight or other airlines 
implying that airport. There were really no disruptions because this incident actually occurred off the Tama of the Kotoka International Airport. Mm. You're saying that's a good excuse because it didn't happen mainstream, um, just in the I main airport? Why would you say that's a good excuse? I don't remember us talking about excuses. What you're asking is what we're doing. My position is that government is always on the side of the passengers and the citizens and that our reputation as a safe and efficient airport is not in doubt. That what we're trying to do as much as possible is to allow the experts to come up with a report and to inform us of what, why this incident occurred. I'm also just explaining that basically there were no disruptions because these are some of the questions that have come up and I've heard some speculation in the media about whether or not there were disruptions or not. So no, there were no disruptions and no, we're not making any excuses and no, these things do not happen all the time in Ghana. They do happen every now and then. But what we try as much as possible to do is to ensure that the best of our ability, we reduce them from this. Mm. So that is what we're working on. The, the last couple of weeks has seen media reports um, about concerns being raised by the Ghana Civil Aviation Authority about encroachment around the airports. Um, how is that um, shaping up to, especially when there are directives or some reports that are indicating there could be some demolitions of unauthorized structures? Um, I didn't even get that. I think your line was actually... Yeah, we're doing that. The GCA has been indicating that they were worried about the sighting of unauthorized structures around the airports and the airport lands. Uh, how is that shaping up to? Uh, actually, I have actually also heard of these reports and I've heard of these complaints. But no, we haven't received any formal uh, information in that regard. So I'm sure that very soon the GCA would be responding because, of course, they would also be privy to the information currently out there in the public domain. But mm. I have not been informed officially, and I don't think the Honorable Minister has received such a report about any such uh, building seen in the flight path. In fact, I actually cross-checked when I first read the story, and I was informed that presently no such buildings have actually been planted. But in the event that they do, I'm sure that a solution will be found to that as well. Well, thank you very much. And we've been speaking to Deputy Transport Minister Joyce Bauer Montari and uh, giving us uh, an overview as to what steps are being taken, not only by the ministry, but also uh, the GCA as well as the Ghana Airports Company to investigate this very incident. Uh, but our, our last well, conclusion on this very. Well, but she is under her ministry. Yes, uh, she, uh, she doesn't seem to. Well, she I'm says surprised. the ministry doesn't seem to. I'm surprised that uh, even after this incident, she doesn't seem to have accurate information on whether indeed those um, structures around the airport are authorized or, or unauthorized. We seem to be hearing from her that we should wait for aviation to bring their report about these structures. I don't think that's good enough. If it's about the, the, uh, the, the crash of the cargo airline, fine enough. But at this stage, I expect the ministry to be aware of structures around the airport whether they are authorized or unauthorized, and those which are even in the flight way, then we, we will lay our fears to rest that indeed the ministry has confirmed that there are no such fears, that all structures around the airport are authorized, and that we don't need to worry because there's no property, the flight path, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. But if you're not telling me that you, too, you heard and you read and you're waiting for aviation to confirm. I don't think that's good enough because you are in charge. And you're, you're even going ahead to say that you are not aware, you are sure your minister too has not received any such report. But you are supervising the aviation in industry and the civil aviation authority. Mm. So we have scenarios here. The ministry says, well, we're not worried. But the GCA, which is responsible for that, is worried. Whether they are mm. buildings on the flight path or not, they are saying they are encroachment on the airport lands yes. and around the airport, yeah. Yeah. which is inimical to having safe flights. Uh, and they've indicated that in various media interviews, really. Yes. So I think that there, there must be some communication uh, not going on, you know, between the GCA and the, 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 the ministry. And I think that is a cause for worry. <laughs> you know, um, there should always be the flow of information, you know, such that the, the, the supervising body is always in the know on what is happening, etc., etc. Um, 
and uh, I, I won't, I don't think it's peculiar to them. You probably find it in so many other, you know, um, ministries and agencies, etc. You know, where they, there isn't the proper communication, and it doesn't allow um, proper supervision to go on. Um, these, these are safety issues, and um, this is. Uh, um, people's lives, you know, that are at risk. You, you don't want um, it to be a passenger plane the next time. So I guess we, we must get on top of it and ensure that, you know, whatever it is, the proper things should be done. Mm. And um, safety should be on top. It doesn't matter. You, I mean, I don't know. And sometimes it's, it, it's, uh, it's amazing in this country what people, things get on and on and on and on till something you know drastic happens before we we we, we, we actually set up yeah, and even that we only set up for about the definition you know. of drastic there's a presidential definition drastic is not much okay so maybe something explosive <laughs> okay oh, we're waiting for something catastrophic uh -huh. to happen you know before then we sit up. And even that, we only sit up for a short while. Mm. We put a band aid on it, and as soon as that happens, we well, forget. We go to sleep. You, we go to sleep again. I, we, we must stop that cycle. From the minister's um, interaction with us, um, does it give an indication of some level of sense of urgency as to how, how crucial safety is important, especially because this, and according to what the two of you have indicated or observed, it could have been a passenger airline. Yes. And a passenger uh, airline could have been more disastrous. Yes. And, and uh, do you I, see that sense of urgency? No, Perhaps I, I maybe it's know. the way she's communicating. Yeah, the way she's communicating. But I expect that this thing happened over the weekend. Mm. And that you, should, you should have all the information by now. By this time, we by should this be. time, you should be able to tell us that you need us encroachment or not. But if you're waiting for the agency, which is under your ministry, to speak about it, that means even over the 48 hours, there's not been much communication as far as this matter is concerned. Okay.